Okay, so let's start leveraging Assistance API from OpenAI and create profiles on potential leads and our current customers. We're gonna be leveraging Zapier and Tables. Obviously, we're gonna be leveraging Assistance API in order to create these profiles. And the end goal here essentially is that anytime we deal with the same individual, we have data from past conversations with this individual that we can leverage in our business for whatever the context may be. Let's jump in. Welcome back to Corbin AI also. We're gonna be doing a more complex video today which I know some of my audience really likes. So I make sure I tailor my stuff like that. But go ahead and follow me on Twitter if you wanna see random stuff that I'm talking about or just random shout outs of videos that came out. New year, new me. <laughs> All right, we're in 2024, y'all. So let's go ahead and jump in. So the idea behind this video is that we're gonna go ahead and create an assistance API. We're gonna create this assistance API with the purpose of basically tracking and storing data based off conversations where the unique identifier in our specific context here is gonna be the email. So to speak more layman here, essentially what this means is that when we receive inquiries through email, or this could be used in other contexts, we're gonna go ahead and associate that specific user's email and get all the data from that user that we've interacted with and have it always on call. So we don't have to look at past emails, we don't have to look at past interactions, we can kind of get a general idea of just who this individual is before we even started the conversation. On top of that, I did a video similar to this in the past. I'll go ahead and link it up there. It is similar to this, but this is probably a more optimized way of approaching it when it comes to storing data, handling data, and handling these kind of specific inquiries. So let's go ahead and start off by creating our Assistance API. All right, so if you are not familiar with Assistance API, I encourage you to check out my other videos when it comes to Assistance API, as you'll get a way better understanding and idea of how to leverage this. So I'm gonna create a really simple one here. We're gonna call it real estate agent. If you wanna see more advanced ones or how to handle more data with the files function or just stuff of this nature, they'll probably be on the suggested bar over there or you can go ahead and just type in like Corbin AI Assistance API, that rhymed on accident, and you get more of an idea. Purpose of this video though is to just show you how to lock in, basically create profiles. This is pretty advanced, but we're gonna create profiles on individuals. So I'm just gonna say, uh, respond to lead emails with one sentence. We're gonna go ahead and just put the default to GPT-4 here, and we're gonna go ahead and save. So that's all we need to do on the Assistance API side. We're gonna go ahead and jump over to Zapier here. I'm gonna go ahead and create a table here. So if you're not familiar with tables, think of it like Excel sheets, but we can do a ton more stuff. We can actually put functions within Excel sheets. I've done videos on this as well. If you are familiar with coding and you have programmed in the past, think of this as basically like fire store database. This is like kind of like basically giving us a backend. This stuff's powerful, y'all. Um, probably not a lot of videos on it that really show you the abilities of this, but all I want you to think of is that this is how we're gonna store and create profiles on individuals that interact for business. Therefore, let's go ahead and create a blank table here. We're just gonna call this, uh, you know, we'll say our real estate company name is uh, Pinewood Houses Database. All right, we're gonna hit create table here. So if you're familiar with programming, this is kind of nice. Basically, a big thing with programming is when an individual signs up for your platform or interacts with your software, you have a unique identifier in order to associate all the interactions that they had on your platform with data. So we can do a similar thing here in Zapier here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create our unique identifier or the way we're gonna identify our unique identifier in this context is gonna be an email. So we're gonna do email here, or we're gonna say user's email. And we'll do email. Here we go, okay. You can even choose icons. This used to glitch a lot, y'all. So let's see if this works. Okay, it does, cool. We can actually do like based off the Gmail too. All right, I like this. All right, I want to save here. And actually it looks like Zapier is pretty nice here with their, they, they basically looks like they've added a unique identifier as well. We can't use theirs in this context as this is gonna be very specific to the email and our current conversations here. But that is interesting. I do like what they're doing with that but we can't use it in our context. So we're gonna go ahead and add another field here. We're gonna go ahead and call this field message ID. So here's a great thing about Assistance API and basically why everyone has been losing their mind over it is it basically makes it so that on a, let's just, let me give you an example real quick. So as you know, with ChatGPT, if I get in a conversation, this is basically where Assistance API is very powerful. So when I can go um, tell me how to make pasta, let me go ahead and shrink down, y'all, so I'm not huge on your screen. Oh, come on. There we go. So, basically what Assistance API does, so you can just visually see it, is that 
now when we are in conversations in the context of API, e.g., everything you do with automation and the software side, we can understand that what was said previously. So it's their version of like basically tracking all the data for conversation. Knowing that in order to reference a said conversation, we're gonna use message ID. Um, we're gonna hit save here. And there's other stuff we can add here. So this can get very complex y'all. We can do stuff such as reference the message ID, summarize it, and then basically add different tags based off the message ID, you know, more characterizing the lead more, cold, warm, uh, hot, stuff of this nature. But for this purpose of this video, I'm just gonna show you how to track data specific to a user's ID and everything that's been associated with that user. So for this, I'm just gonna delete the field. But we can get more complex. Let me know in the comments down below if you want more complex tutorials when it comes to tables as this is basically our version of accessing a backend. But Zapier makes it nice because it's a nice UI. So let's go ahead and create a new Zapier. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and hit create Zapier. First thing I wanna showcase here is basically Assistance API and one of its downfalls. So you might be saying, how is there a downfall of Assistance API? There is a downfall. For some reason, don't know why, maybe they'll change this in the future, but for some reason, the very first conversation, the very first message doesn't get saved in the underlying message ID. E.g., if I say, hello, ChatGPT, how is today? And we get into a conversation, the message ID associated with that doesn't get the first, very first line, which is problematic. Due to the fact that in order to basically get a much, as much context with our individual in this, we're gonna have to ensure that we get all the data that is relevant to that individual. Therefore, there's a workaround here, but first let me just show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna go ahead and say new email here, and we're gonna go ahead and use our courses email, and we're gonna continue here. And as you probably saw in the beginning of this video, we already have a pseudo email that I sent to myself here. I'm gonna test this trigger. This is gonna be basically the email that I receive here. Question about a random home. I think this home was actually in Miami. I don't know if it's been sold yet. Continue. And let me just prove what I'm basically saying here. So I'm gonna hit chat GBT here. And we're going to do conversation with assistant. Let me zoom in. And we're going to actions. Perfect. Connected. Good to go. We're going to say, uh, basically, actually, we're just going to put in the body plane. Because we've already identified within the assistant API actions here that it's going to respond to the lead of one sentence emails. So we're just going to put in the body plane here. We're going to choose our assistant. And everything else will stay the same. So if you're familiar with assistant site, uh, API, we don't have access to a message ID until the first message is sent. But here is the issue. I send this message, which is the body that we received. But as you'll notice, and I'll, I'll gut check it to prove it. We got a response here, right? Hi, Timothy, Northwest Pine Home property, et cetera, et cetera. If I had dupl duplicate here and I come back to actions and I come over to conversation ID and I type in message, this is how we reference conversations IDs. And we go to message ID and I simply ask, what was the, well, actually, let me do one more just to prove this. We're gonna say, um, tell me, we're gonna say, hello, wanting to see about a house in Miami called uh, Flamingo Go Go. I don't know. Off the top of the head, y'all. Hit test step here. So, as you see, we'll get a one sentence response as well, but. As we know from what I've just shown here, the very first message was this one. Therefore, when I ask ChatGPT here, what was the first message in this conversation? Because we had the message ID. We should get Northquest Pine Home, but we're not. And that's part of the issue or part of the limitations, but I have a workaround. I'll show y'all. So I'm going to say, what was the first message in this chat? And as you see, it won't actually be that body email. As you see, we got the message ID. Continue test step here, and we're gonna get a faulty. Basically, if we didn't recognize this error, we would actually have the data associated with that customer be limited. And as you see, it talks about Flamingo Go Go. Well, that was the second conversation. It wasn't the first. This was the first. So, knowing all this, I'm gonna delete all of this. I'm gonna just delete these chat GBT blocks, and we're gonna proceed with a workaround of how to get around this to ensure that we're doing this correctly. So, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. Delete this as well. And we'll come back over here. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. This is very simple. We're gonna go ahead and lower our model to GBT 3.5 turbo. Extremely cheap. Host dev day, they slashed it by 66%. We're talking micro pennies, y'all. But into in order to ensure that we get all the data associated with individual minus the top here, all we need to do is this. We know our specific context that we made this assistance API 
or made our assistant for the context of handling. So also just spoiler, basically the, the end goal of what I'm gonna show in this use case is basically creating a draft email, but you can use it in whatever context you may wanna do it, but it's gonna be a draft email that we're gonna be able to reference later on. That being said though, we know the use case for our assistance API here is gonna be a real estate draft email responder. We could have loaded it with data, we could have done more, but for now we're not gonna get fancy. We're just gonna say, we received a lead email. So this is gonna incur the message ID, which is the basically the gold here. We're gonna make sure we go to 3.5 here. We're gonna get a hit continue and test step. Boom, we just created a conversation. But now we can use and leverage this conversation message ID that we received from this output. So basically what I'm saying here, the purpose of this is to create a message ID and make it cost effective for us. Perfect, we've created our message ID that we're gonna associate with the individual who emailed us. So knowing that, we're gonna hit duplicate here. Let me delete this because I don't want that. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do conversation, conversation. We're gonna say, we'll just say this is the draft email. Well, this is the draft email. Then we can provide the message we received in that draft email. That being said, with the underlying email we received, I've done a ton of videos when it comes to Gmails, how to fine tune your trigger in order to ensure that you're not wasting it on random spam emails, maybe from MailChimp wanting to upgrade your subscription, stuff of this nature. You can check out those videos as well. But now that we've done this, we can start our new chat here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna update to GBT4 and our conversation ID is gonna come from our create message ID function here and it's gonna be called message ID. Zapier, if you're watching this, change message ID to conversation ID or message ID, like make it so that they're the same as someone that's new could probably get very confused on the naming difference here. So maybe just change this to message ID, I don't know. Hit continue here and we're gonna test this step. So we're gonna get a response here. And what we can do with this response is we can go ahead and create the draft email here, but we're gonna add a couple more steps here so we can reference the database we just created. So then we got this, we got our response, perfect. Hi, Timothy, I'm glad to, uh, to assist you. Now to gut check this and to prove what I'm saying earlier in this video, I'm simply just gonna do this. So what was the first message in this conversation? So the real first message, as you saw before, is like we received a lead email, remember? This was the real one, but as I, we received a lead email, but as I showed you, the real for the, the actual one that's gonna be stored as data is going to be the initial body email we received from Timothy. So we should see a best regards here and the original email. So as you see here, what was the first message in the conversation? Uh, the first message in the conversation was in your inquiry about how to learn more about the North Pinecrest property. There you go. I was wondering how to learn about the North Crest property. There we go. So. Now we know we have all the relevant data that we care about in this conversation. Let's proceed with basically creating a profile for this individual. We're gonna create a table here. And the purpose of this table here is we're gonna create a record. In this record, this is where we're going to associate all this information. So I've chose the table we just created together here, Pinewood Houses database. The user's email is the most important part of this. This is gonna be the data that we associate with this individual. So for this context, this might get a little confusing because I believe I sent it to myself. I did, okay, but for me, it's gonna be the from email. This is basically, who sent me the email? Perfect, now here's where it gets cool. Now that we have the from email, we're gonna associate the conversation we have with this individual to the message ID. So we do message ID, and then boom, continue, test this step. And as you'll see in our database here, we should see it click here, there we go. We got the underlying user's email and we got the message ID associated with that user. So we're gonna say create profile. We're gonna say that for now. That's how you spell profile. No, it isn't, but okay. Then from here, let's just go ahead and just put the cherry on top here and essentially just create a draft just to dot our I's and cross our T's. So I'm gonna continue here, continue here. And the subject will just be, you know, draft setup or, you know, uh, what was our name of our company? Pinecrest? No. Flamingo Go Go? I don't remember. We're just going to say real estate <laughs> response. And then to the two person will do it to the individual that obviously sent us an email. And do, 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 do emails. Or, nope, sorry. 
we're going to do the person that sent us the email, not sending it to ourself. A little confusing just because I sent it to myself in the actual example. And then obviously we're going to go to a reply here. And here we go. There we go for response. And you can add a signature, et cetera, et cetera. Test this step. And then we'll get our response. We could obviously add HTML here, make it look pretty. But for our use case, if I come to draft here, we got our nice little draft email. Ton of videos on this if you want to see how to make this look cooler. But that's not the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is showing you how to reference this data. So stage one is complete. Let's go to stage two. This is basically where the magic happens. I'm going to go ahead and back out of this and create a new zap. All right, so we're going to go ahead and just do reference data. So what's cool about this, and in this example, I'm just going to do a new email is in my inbox again, but this could be spread across any context. For example, if you have a Slack channel and an individual that's being circulated through your business and their email is their unique identifier and it shows up, you could run some type of Slack trigger here where this email shows up, do X, Y, Z. This can be used in any context. The context I'm going to show you is just basically just me being very simple, but just showing you the power of it. So for me, I'm just going to pretend like there's another new email from this individual. So I'm going to Gmail here and we're going to go ahead and do email. Where's the new email? We continue and go choose our courses account and hit continue again. We'll go ahead and choose inbox here, continue, test it. And we should get the same data here, but here is where the magic incurs. So in this context, we're going to assume that we are not creating a new profile in our database, but we're referencing the profile we created. E.g. we're referencing this right here. And we know that this individual may or may have not have already been through our profile creator. That being said, there actually would probably need to be additional logic added here. So the additional logic that you'd probably want to add to that original automation I created here would also be a filter block. Now, the purpose of this filter block is to basically cross-reference our underlying database there to ensure that the profile hasn't been created yet. So actually, instead of a filter block, we're going to need a pass block here. Because uh, we don't want to filter out individuals, rather we want to actually set it up so that if individuals have a profile and database with us, or they're basically if they're in the database, we're going to do path B. If you're not in the database, we're going to do path A. So let's assume that essentially at the beginning of this though, we're going to have to do a table search. So we'll do zap your tables. We're going to say uh, find record, continue, table ID, perfect. And filter count should be fun. And essentially, we're going to do a lookup field. We're going to do user's email. It is exactly lookup value. And we're going to go ahead and do the from email here. So this. Continue. Test this step. So as you see here, we got a Boolean. Zap search status was found to be true. So really to clarify this and send this home, let me back out. So as you see with this, this is creating an individual within our database. So therefore, I probably needed to add a pass block here as well, because if this was a new email and that individual's already in our database, we would want it to send it down different paths. So let's jump back over to the automation. This is actually pretty simple, y'all. We're gonna do path A here. And we're gonna say uh, exist database. And then we're gonna say doesn't exist. We're gonna say not in database to make it very clear. And when I keep referencing database, that is the tables we created together. So we're gonna go to paths here. And basically, this is very simple, y'all. If we go to this and we're going to say if zap search status or zap search was found to be true, we're going to say exactly matches true, we are going to proceed with this route. Now, if it doesn't exist, so we're going to say zap status is exactly matches false, we're going to proceed down this route. So here's what we're going to do. And there you go. So it doesn't exist. Or sorry, this, it wouldn't continue on this path because it does exist. But here's the situation. Essentially, what we do here is this. If the data exists, we're going to go ahead and proceed with however we want this automation to proceed because we have the reference data. If it doesn't exist, then we're going to go ahead and create a record and then proceed with the already existing automation that, that was the original intention of this automation flow. That might have sounded very confusing. But let's just say this. If I come over here, let's just first gut check this. We're going to go ahead and actually add a uh, table block. So we are under the impression here that we basically know that the data exists because it does exist. But let's go ahead and just show you the, the use case of this, right? So we're going to still go ahead and say find or create record. I'm going to continue here. 
We're going to say table ID. So our lookup field here is going to be user's email is exactly. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, basically grab the email that's from the email here. And then the second one is going to be our lookup field is going to be the message ID. Okay. And with the message ID, we're going to do the operator of starts with MSG. MSG. As we know that all message IDs start with MSG. This is just how they reference them in the API documentation. Therefore, when we search this, we're going to get the relevant message ID that's been associated with that email or slash unique identifier. Therefore, we can go ahead and proceed with furthering the conversation in a separate flow and reference that data. So we can go ahead and say, what was the home that was being asked about? We're going to go ahead and try our assistant here, which is going to be our real estate. And then we're going to go ahead and reference this conversation ID that we just found as a record here, which is going to be the MSG message ID. We even named it correctly here. And then continue here. And then we should see North Crest Pine Home, if I said that correctly. And that's going to prove that this worked. And there you go. The home that was asked about was the North Pine Crest home property. Okay, so then we can proceed from here. We have all the data associated with that message ID throughout our entire system and restructuring of our company here. We've now identified that basically any conversation or any type of interaction with our company, we can start storing in this message ID rather than storing a bunch of data on this underlying Zapier table. We can actually store it in this message ID now and we can reference it later on. That being said, due to the complexities of what I just described here, it is going to require a little bit more logic. So it's going to require these paths. So let's just say my original intention of this was basically just have an end conversion event where I just asked it that question. What I meant earlier when I said if it's not in the database, this is when we run the flow that we saw in the first automation. You might be asking yourself, what was that flow? That flow was specifically creating the message ID and creating a record in Zapier tables. And then once we have that, we can proceed with whatever our end conversion event is in this context. That was a lot, y'all. This was a complex tutorial. Let me know if you liked it. But that was, okay, I got really large there. But let me know if you liked it. That kind of concludes this tutorial. Basically, I wanted to show you how to create, start creating data profiles on individuals that uh, basically interact with your business. A really great, natural, unique identifier in this context is always gonna be email, as you can't have two individuals have the same email. They always have separate emails. On top of that, make sure to leave a like if you felt like you learned something in today's video. If you like this kind of video, I guarantee there's a bunch of suggested videos with my face on it, talking about other stuff when it comes to assistance API. I'll also leave a playlist here called Zapier and approaching all 5,000 apps on OpenAI or on Zapier. And you can check out that playlist as well. But without further ado, y'all, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. And yes, surprise, I'm an AI avatar. Make sure to explore more here at Corbin AI, where we demystify AI for your personal and business life. Until next time.